Psalm 147:7 says, "Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving; sing praise upon the harp unto our God." We will have another solo performance by Mr. P. S. Daniel. Chennai, Nalooli, Vinkaru. 
Thank you, Mr. Daniel, for that wonderful performance. It is said, music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. St. John's Youth Fellowship, JYF, will now present a rendition of an a cappella song. A cappella is a group song without instrumental accompaniment. In addition to singing words or lyrics, some a cappella singers also emulate instrumentation by reproducing instrumental sounds through their vocal cords and mouths. Let's hear it for the JYF as they come on stage to perform the a cappella. Surrounded by the fortress strong And a wind When all the storms of life are raging Hold on Hold on Hold on Hold on, hold on to the rock You've got to Hold on to the rock of ages Hold on to the cornerstone Hold a stand Set strong on the shore foundation Surrounded by the fortress strong And a wind When all the storms of life are raging Hold on Hold on Hold on Hold on, hold on to the rock Hold on Hold on Hold on You gotta hold on Hold on Thank you, JYF, for that wonderful rendition of the a cappella. We are indeed fortunate to have our Diocese Bishop, Right Reverend Dr. Giver Gismar Theodosius with us today. Our beloved Tirmeni hails from Chakalail family in Ashtamudi. He was ordained as a Achan in 1972 and as a bishop in 1989. He is a visionary leader and has been involved in many projects. He was responsible for starting the Snehatiram project for the AIDS affected families and their children. This was the first of its kind in the Tiruvanthapuram diocese. Gyana Kendram project, land for the landless, educational care project for the underprivileged and brilliant students are some of the projects that our beloved Tirumeni has been associated with. Prior to taking charge of the Mumbai diocese, Tirumeni was the diocese bishop for North America. He was very much engaged with the youth in the Diocese of North America and connected with them on various mission activities. He has brought in a new focus and energy to many of the activities of our diocese. I take this opportunity to welcome Tirimeni into our midst. 
respected Vika, Reverend Thomas K. Jacob, revered clergy, Kachamas, distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, parents and children. On this joyous occasion, I bring you greetings from the Diocese of Mumbai and also the Matama Syrian Church of Malabar. We are all here to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of the St. John's Matama Parish, Kirki. I join you in praising God for the wonderful ways in which God has led and guided this faith community. And I take this opportunity to felicitate all those who have worked very hard in organizing the various Jubilee programs and also bringing us together for a public meeting of this sort. My familiarity with St. John's Mathama Parish goes back to 1972 when I joined as an associate vicar of St. Thomas Parish, Santa Cruz. Reverend Dr. P.J. Philip Achan was the vicar of this parish at that time. And that familiarity grew as years passed by. And I am glad that I am right in the midst of all of you today as the Diocese and Bishop. There's no need to tell, but all of you know very well that St. John's Mathama Parish is playing a very vital role in the life and work of the Diocese of Mumbai now. And we look forward to see that that fellowship with the diocese will continue, will strengthen, and also will yield results. Golden Jubilee is a time when we remember with gratitude that the faith community, we started as a few coming together for worship, for fellowship, for Bible study, for prayer and the like, that grew as a larger parish in Pune Center. And now you have spread your wings and the parish has penetrated into various activities that the parish is now doing in the larger society here in Pune Center. The emblem which I saw as the 50-year celebration of the parish, it highlighted the fellowship and the witness of the parish. When, whenever we gather together as members of the church, we are gathering together to strengthen the fellowship, which means we are not withdrawing ourselves, but we are becoming people who help each other, strengthen each other, and then grow up as one body, which is the body of Christ. In coming together, we understand the need of the other and then respond to that in the great love which God, through His Son, revealed to us. And therefore, we not only become conscious of the need of the other people, but also express our intention in caring for the other by contributing, by helping, and also giving greater fellowship to the people who are in need. We read about the early church, that the early church not only continued as a faith community, but they gathered together at the feet of the apostles to study the word of God, to discern the will and purpose of God about them, and also when they came together, they prayed for the strengthening of the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they went out into the world to witness the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
The function of a parish is not only to come together for worship, to have fellowship, but also to go out into the world to witness the one whom we consider very dear to us, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Revealing him through our own self, revealing him to so many people around us, that brings the witness for which we are brought together as a parish, which we now call as the St. John's Mahatma Parish in Kirki. In the Western outlook, when we speak about carrying out witness, they think about sending people to remote areas where they preach about the gospel that was given to us by Almighty God, a gospel that was revealed to us through His Son, Jesus Christ, thereby bringing them together to the good news that in Jesus Christ there is freedom, in Jesus Christ there is redemption, in Jesus Christ there is salvation. This good news was given out to the people who, who never heard about Jesus Christ and therefore we know of various missionary movements that started from Europe and other places. Even in India we had uh, so many missionaries coming in. Say for example, William Carey and uh, uh, his uh, colleagues who came over to West Bengal where they preached the gospel, they became the gospel, and they planted the church. But as far as the Eastern Church is concerned, it is more about revealing what we believe, revealing whom we believe, revealing what is expected of a larger society when people are brought together. So we are speaking more like the symbols that are used by Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount when he said that you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Symbols which indicate that we are called to be witnessing wherever we are placed. Witnessing wherever we are placed. So the very life that we are living is to be a witness. People with whom uh, we'll be dealing with every day, people to whom we'll be speaking, people to whom we'll be responding in God's love, all these are the people who understand the light that is given to a person whom we call as a Christian, a child of God. So it's not only really having a, a personal relationship with, the, with, the, with God and with uh, Jesus Christ, but also the person in community, the person revealing what he believes, person revealing to the world what is the light that is given to him, person revealing to the world what is more noble, more acceptable, and more that makes our personality alive. So being a witness in the world is not going out to the Tibetan border, going out to Nepal, going out to Sihora. These are necessary because there are, these are places where the gospel has, was, was never reached. So that was necessary. But then remember that the very place where we are placed, there's a need to give light because there are forces of darkness that are creeping in. Forces of evil that are prevalent. Forces that are dominant in uh, subjugating the people. So it is right where we are placed that we are called to witness the Lord. And uh, when we are celebrating the Golden Jubilee, let us ask the question uh, whether through the 50 years of our existence here on the surface of earth, have we develop the spirit of fellowship with which we are in a stronger way able to tell the world that we are together and the relationship that we have now is thicker than the relationship that we had 50 years ago. I want to tell everybody who is listening to me now 
that we live in a world where people are alienating themselves from the fellowship, from the community, from the society, thinking that they can uh, be self-sufficient, thinking that they do not need uh, the help of another person, thinking that they can be prominent, they can uh, grow into a status, a prestigious position where the rest of the world will, uh, will always be serving them. But dear friends, the call that is given to a Christian is just the reverse. Just the reverse. So it is not the worldly norm that we should be following after 50 years of our existence. But after 50 years of existence examining the larger society where we should be able to say that there is a different way of life. That there is a different way in which the life together on the surface of earth can be more harmonious, more uh, bringing more joy to the people, and also where people together can breathe freedom. I don't have to spend time right now telling you how the freedom is curtailed because of the attitudes, because of the behaviors, because of this, uh, some of the things that the people gather together to think about, that is curtailing the freedom of the country, freedom of the society, freedom of the people. I am not here to do that. You are all conscious of it. But then let us remember that when God and Jesus Christ has set us free, that is a freedom that is to be enjoyed. That is a freedom that is to be exercised. That is a freedom to which we need to lead the people. To experience that in the presence of God, you can rejoice. The Bible is not telling us that you won't have tribulation. You won't have pain. You won't have suffering. The Bible is affirming that. But in the midst of all this, in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering, in the midst where you will have your life uh, corner to one corner or the other, remember that the joy that is given to us in Jesus Christ is a joy that can be not only experienced but also can be shared. Say, for example, in the letter to the church at Philippi, Saint Paul is saying, "Rejoice!" And I say, and again I say, "Rejoice!" We know that uh, Saint Paul is writing that uh, letter to the people, the faith community, when he was in chain, when he was in pain, when he was suffering. But then he is telling the faith community that in Jesus, in spite of all this, we have greater joy, and that joy is to be enjoyed, experienced. And also expressed. We know that when Paul and Silas, both of them were in prison in, in uh, Philippi, in the late hour of the night, they were singing songs and praising God. And we know that the earthquake broke the chains, broke the prison, and they were free to go. But they didn't go. They remained there because they understood that they have a witness to carry out right there in the midst of darkness, right there in the prison, right there where people have power and authority. And he was able to, or they were able to lead the jailer and his family to believe in Jesus Christ, thereby enjoying the freedom that was given by God through Jesus Christ. This is the style which is given to the church as a whole. Not to look at the world and then uh, speak about all the pain and suffering, the agony. All, uh, make a list of all those, uh, 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 those uh, life aspects. Instead, look at them and then uh, tell to the whole world, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of the cross, there is victory. There is peace. There is joy. And therefore, we need to experience that joy in a, pe but in a peculiar manner through our faith in Christ Jesus, who is the Redeemer of the whole world. Rabin Tago, he was an environmentalist. He loved uh, nature. He, he lived in a village. And therefore, one day he went to some of the plants over there. 
and uh, saw a tree and asked this question what do you speak about god it may sound to be peculiar or surprising that uh, a person is talking to a tree when you are friendly with nature you can very well understand that you can talk you can smile you can have a conversation but that is something which you need to experience by being in the garden with the plants and the trees right this uh, tago was asking the tree what do you speak about god and tago wrote down instead of saying something the tree just bloomed and that is the revelation that the tree the tree brought to devendra tago who is god god is one who is en- enabling the tree to bloom enabling the tree to bear to bear its fruit bring out its uh, fruit to the whole world to the whole human kind now with this example let us look into the celebration the 50th celebration the golden jubilee of our parish looking into the 50th year we should be able to say through the last 50 years god has been uh, blessing us we were growing and we have milestones which we can say i i heard that there was a good uh, history of the parish uh, given over here in the public meeting i couldn't be here because uh, i was traveling all through but then uh, now that you can uh, speak about a good history of st john's martha man parish remember that that history is telling us about how god was leading and guiding us how by the grace of god we could all come together do 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 some hard work and achieve certain things these are the things that would come in a report that will be presented in a public meeting with that as the background we are a tree that is already grown and what is the function of the tree the function of the tree is to bloom and give result so remember that this golden jubilee is giving us a challenge and the challenge is not to sit back and then say that we have lived 50 years and we have achieved so many things but then look forward commit yourself and then say there are more and more things to be done here on earth as a parish as a faith community as a worshiping community and those fruits that are to be brought out through the community life of the whole parish is to be seen in the years to come and therefore 50th year the golden jubilee year is not simply a moment where we can simply say right we can stand here good historically significant occasion praise god for all all the blessings that we uh, god has done to us and the blessings that we have seen no that is not a time for you to stop but that is a time to take the next step and the next step is to be more rendering fellowship to the people that is a time for you to commit yourself to bring out the best in all of you tomorrow i'll be having time to speak to you and tomorrow we'll also be gathering together to worship and let us be looking at the lord to find out what is it that the lord wants us to do as we march on to the 51st year and also as we march on to the next decade and look forward to 60th year 75th year and the like as a, as as far as a parish is concerned these are milestones remember as a community there are more expectation from god there are more expectation from the people and there are more things to be done with all the blessings which god has given to us with the potential that we have and also with a deep commitment for which we are brought together to celebrate the golden jubilee once again i congratulate st john smartha my parish in god enabling you to celebrate the golden jubilee and then exhort all the members of the st john smartha my parish 
to take this opportunity as a time of a deeper commitment saying lord you have been kind and generous to all of us and we want to commit ourselves so that we will not stop here we will move forward we will move forward with a sense of mission we will move forward experience the fellowship that we have as a faith community and to the larger world in which we'll be working hard for building up the church and also for the expansion of god's kingdom god's blessings be with you and may this golden jubilee be a memorable occasion for all of us god bless thank you tirmeni for your kind words and encouragement thank you for exhorting us to be witnesses for christ and expressing and sharing our joy with the community around us thank you for also challenging us not to rest on the laurels of the last 50 years but to look forward to see what more we can do for the people around us we will now move to the next item which is the releasing of the souvenir our golden jubilee celebrations may come to an end today but memories will be treasured for times to come through the souvenir that we will be officially releasing today the responsibility of coming up with the souvenir was entrusted to the editorial board under the able leadership of mr george matthew it has been a painstaking effort to put together this souvenir we are thankful to mr george matthew and the entire editorial team for their efforts we will now have the formal release of the souvenir for our golden jubilee by our tirumeni we request the center clergy secretary reverend saji thomas achan to kindly receive the souvenir from tirumeni i release this souvenir by congratulating all those who work hard in bringing out uh, uh, an issue like this to commemorate the golden jubilee celebration and also praising god for all his kindness and may this release be in the name of the father son and the holy spirit can we please have a lou- louder round of applause Thank you. As a part of the Golden Jubilee celebrations, we had organized a competition for the Jubilee logo, Jubilee theme song, and also had a sports day. We now request the winners to kindly line up. Requesting Tirumeni to kindly hand over the prizes. First prize for the Golden Jubilee logo competition goes to Mrs. Chris Elza Zakaria. The second prize goes to Master Alexander Thomas. He is not here today. The third prize goes to Mrs. Anisha Manish. The Golden Jubilee theme song competition winner is Mr. James George. And the overall championship for the sports day events goes to the Ound Road A Prayer Group. I request Mr. T C Abraham to kindly accept the prize on behalf of the Ound Road A Prayer Prayer Group.
Thank you very much, Thirmeni. The choir will now present an English song which reminds us that we are all lost in sin and it is in the love of Jesus that takes us from all our troubles. And all we need is just a little talk with Jesus. I would like to now invite the choir to perform the song Have a Little Talk with Jesus written by Clevin Derricks. popular boat race in Kerala. The entire pack of oarsmen sing the boatman's song while rowing the boat. The lyrics Titi Tara Titi Tai which is sung at the end of each stanza is an enjoyable chorus. This song helps to break the monotony experienced by the boatsmen and it helps synchronize the action of the oarsmen as only coordinated action helps the boat go faster. Our choir will now take us to God's own country so let us sit back and enjoy the rendition of this song. Oh, <laughs> 
for that wonderful performance it is said that children are like buds in a garden they should be carefully and lovingly nurtured as they are the future of the nation and the citizens of tomorrow our sunday school children are our church future as we move from a golden jubilee to a platinum jubilee the sunday school children will now take us back in time to the time of the israelites when they were crossing the river jordan this is synonymous to the long journey of 50 years that our parish has had. So let's invite the Sunday school children to perform this skit. 
After this kit, we will have just one more program, that is the choreography by the youth, after which we conclude the cultural program. So thanks for your patience, and sit through and enjoy the skit and the choreography. Thank you. I here to present the Stones of Jordan. This story transports us to the day before the crossing of the Jordan River, when the Israelites are still scared and unsure. They cross the flooded Jordan and as per God's instructions, then built a memorial with the stones picked from the riverbed as a testimony of God's deliverance. The script draws a light parallel between the 40 years of the Israelites' journey and the last 50